Hello everyone. Welcome to Life and Beyond, a platform where we create content to make lives better. Today we have come with a very relevant topic. We all know COVID-19 is coming up again and again with more and more waves. The most vulnerable group in this being our kids. So, it's the need of the hour to understand what are the effects of COVID-19 on our kids, both direct and indirect. Let's hear the words of the specialist. Welcome to Life and Beyond. I am Dr. Vidhu Ashok and I work at Malabar Medical College, Modakalur. In the Department of Pediatrics, I am an assistant professor over there. So today, we will just see. Now, since one and a half years, we all know that we are under uh, COVID. And in the past one and a half years, we have seen that we have been fighting against COVID. And we know that COVID is not as simple as we thought. So it is affecting our lives a lot. So we'll just see how we will take care of our children do, during this COVID pandemic. And also, if our children is affected with COVID, how best we can take care of them at home. So what is COVID? So we all know that, that SARS-CoV-2 RNA virus has caused the disease. Now, a person is affected with the disease. It is through the droplets that this disease gets into another person. So once any person, any child is being affected, the viral load is high during the first week and slowly the viral load decreases. So whenever a child gets affected, a few days before, affected in the sense the child shows symptoms of COVID, a few days before and within a few days, five to seven days of after getting the disease, there is high chance that the child will disseminate the disease to another person. And this COVID disease, it actually affects in two phases. It is biphasic. That is, there is a viral illness phase and also there is a second phase, which is the inflammatory phase. So how do we know that our child is affected with COVID? So by now we know that when our child is affected with COVID, the child might have fever, cough, cold, loose stools or vomiting. So any of these symptoms can be there. There can be headache, severe muscle pain or myalgia. But headache and myalgia is less seen in our children. Now we have all heard about the categories. There is A, B, C categories. Now what are these categories? Actually these categories are for healthcare workers so that they understand which child can be sent back home, which child has to be hospitalized and which child is serious or the disease is severe that the child needs more care or need to be referred to an higher center. So category B, uh, sorry, the category A. So the category A we are thinking about what the uh, symptoms will be as we have mentioned. The child might have mild fever, cough, cold, loose stools, vomiting. So all this you can either consult you can always treat the child at home. You can consult a doctor with a, by OPD in a COVID hospital or by the e Sanjeevani or online consultations is enough. But when it is category B, so any of these symptoms, whichever symptoms I had mentioned become severe or our child is already a known case of chronic liver disease, kidney disease, heart disease or is on malignancy drugs for a long period. So it is always better to get one consultation and if needed, the child needs to get admitted. Now if the disease is severe, so disease is severe means the child might have breathlessness, the child might be bluish discoloration called cyanosis, there can be seizures or any of the symptoms is there, the health worker can recognize faster and if possible to treat in that hospital, they will treat there or they might refer to a higher center. Now when our child is being uh, taken care at home, that is home isolation or how can we give better care for our child at home. So before that, what we have to understand is we should always recognize the danger signs or the red flag signs. So what are these signs? So if our child has breathlessness, the child finds it difficult to breathe, our child has high grade fever, the child's sensorium is slightly altered, the child looks little bluish or the child looks very cold. When you touch the child is very cold. The urine output, in a day's urine output has decreased. The child has loose stools, multiple episodes of loose stools or vomiting to the extent that our child is drowsy or the child is inactive. Activity is less. So if you see any of these signs, please do not wait. There is no need of any online consultation. Get the child to the hospital, to the doctor. And the child might need admission and they will treat accordingly. Now, 
if else what i have said about the mild symptoms like our cough cold and all this our child can always be taken care at home so if our child is having fever so we actually prescribe paracetamol according to the weight of the child so accordingly if the dose is given to you you can give paracetamol to the child if the child has fever then one thing what we have to concentrate is we have to make the child take in more of plenty of oral fluids more of water is to be child should take more of water and uh, food should be given in small intervals small quantity in small intervals because if you give more the child might not take it now if a child is having loose stools you can always give ors you can give zinc now already you know in this era you are giving multivitamins you are giving vitamin c there is no harm in giving you can give though uh, whether it is very protective we are not very sure about it now there is one vitamin that is vitamin d actually it is protective but this is a vitamin you should always know that it can result in toxicity also so before giving to your child always consult a doctor and see if you have given it earlier then maybe the child does not need it if you haven't given it you should know in what correct dose it is to be given to your child now what else you can do mild cough is there you can give the child saline gargles you can give honey to the child now steam inhalation is good but we discourage it because we do not want any burns in the child because everyone in the house is going on steam inhaling so we want to i mean uh, burns are dangerous that is why it is better we avoid it if cannot we just avoid it saline gargles can be given to the child if not the child is accepting hot water or warm water that is also fine now to monitor our child at home now how will we recognize that that child is breathless so every time when you actually count the respiratory rate the breath of the child we ideally count for 1 minute one whole minute so in one minute we see how many times the chest is rising so in a child from birth to 2 months so a newborn to up to 2 months if in one minute if the rate is more than 60 then it is a danger sign from 2 months to 1 year if the rate is more than 550 then it is a danger sign in a child 1 to 5 years if the rate is more than 40 40 then it is a danger sign again for a child who is more than 5 years if the rate is more than 30 30 it is a danger sign so this we should be able to check and that for at least 1 minute now if the child is crying it's very difficult to check so it is always better when the child is sleeping or um, child is not very active you can always check all this now at home what we have to uh, remember is it is always better we keep a chart so in a chart we actually uh, plot the timing as morning 8 am whatever is convenient for you but i'm just giving you a time so 8 am 2 pm 8 pm like that you can chart then first you write the respiratory rate so three times in a day you saw so any time you see that the respiratory rate is more whatever i have mentioned after 10 minutes you just check it again if it is more better to i mean you have to take your child to a uh, clinician then you can check uh, the pulse with the pulse oximeter so this is a pulse oximeter now how to use this pulse oximeter it is a handheld pulse oximeter this is an adult machine so if possible you can use in your child so you have to keep the finger then you on it and then you wait so you the immediately what you see is not what you take you at least wait for 30 seconds and then you uh, note it so you wait and then you note so the 98 is your spo2 and in your chart you will put in, you will be putting the 68 as your heart rate so if not possible the child is crying if when the child is sleeping you can try and if not a very small child not not at all cooperative you just forget it's fine then what else can has to be included in our monitor we can include temperature so if it, there is a digital thermometer thermometer you can check or whenever you feel the child has temperature now if the child has loose stools how many times did the child pass stools now if the child how many times our child has passed urine in a day so all these things you can correctly write so that we get an idea so the today the child has not passed enough urine so you can give more water to the child that is how you uh, when you chart it gives us an idea and when you are taking the child to the doctor better you check the chart so he to gets a better idea of how well the child has been taken care so all these so that is why it is very important the charting is very important and in this era we should ideally because we are treating our children at home it is better we maintain all these charts now what are the other things that we should concentrate so 
hand hygiene. So it is very important. Whoever is taking care of the child should also use the dub, uh, double mask because we will be taking care of our other members in our family. If possible, it's better that a child uses a mask. But if not, it is fine. But whoever is taking care always wear a double mask. Hand hygiene, you should strictly follow that. Now, we should know about reverse quarantine. So what is reverse quarantine? When any of our members at home is being exposed or you know that the disease is around, so what you have to do is, in our house when small children are there, uh, adult member, I mean elderly members are there, whoever has chronic liver disease, all these conditions, it is better to isolate them and take care of them so that they would not, we are preventing them from getting the disease. So it is better if we can take care of them in such a way, it is always better. So we have seen that most of the elderly have been severely affected with COVID. But our children, till date, not much affected. So there are uh, many things uh, regarding. So one of them is that the child's immu immunity power is much better than an adult. Another one is the AC receptors through which the virus enters our body. The distribution is a little different. So maybe that is one of the reason. Now these coagulation effects or uh, the blood clotting effects, the blood doesn't coat, clot that faster in a child. So maybe that is one of the reasons that the pneumonia doesn't become very severe in a child. Now vitamin deficiency is less predominant, so maybe that is another reason. So these are just uh, reasons uh, that maybe the disease is not much severe in our kids. Now how will we take care of our child that is our newborn baby? So if the mother is being exposed to COVID within two weeks prior to delivery or the mother is COVID positive or the person who is taking care is COVID positive, so anyway, the baby will be born at hospital. They will check the RT-PCR of the baby within 24 hours. And if the baby is negative, the baby is given to you. So um, it, by the time you reach home, already vaccination, all these things. So if possible only, the doctor will be sending the baby home. So at home, what can we do for the baby? So always our doubt is whether the mother and the baby can be kept together in a room. So if the room is wide enough that we can, uh, a distance of about six feet is there between the mother and the baby's bed, then it is always possible in the same room or in the next room. But the baby should be with the, always another bystander who is able to take care of the baby. Now, while breastfeeding, is breastfeeding contraindicated? It is not at all contraindicated. So the uh, transmission of COVID through breast milk is till now not proved. So the mother can always, if she can, she can always bre breastfeed the baby. So prior to breastfeeding, what are the things that she should take into consideration? She should be wearing an N95 mask. Then she should wash her hands. It is always better if she can uh, wear a, a gown over her dress. And while holding the baby, it is better that she doesn't look at the baby and feed to keep a face a little tilted. So if she wants to cough or sneeze, it is better to hand over the baby to the bystander and then she finishes the coughing and sneezing, she can wash her hands and again handle the baby. Now express breast milk can always be given to the baby. The bystander can give it using a spoon. Now if our baby is COVID positive, obviously the, uh, only because the baby is fine, the baby is being sent home. So there is no need of doing antigen test and proving negative. So after 17 days, the baby can be taken as negative and then uh, uh, as routine, how do you take care? You can do all that for the baby. Now, if the mother is COVID positive, but she had a mild disease, so at least three days of she being uh, uh, febrile, there is no fever or any of the symptoms, then up to 17 days, that is almost two weeks, 17 days is the time that we should be following this kind of a protocol and feeding the baby. Now, if the mother had a severe disease, then at least 21 days, you have to follow this and only then uh, you can be a little relaxed in the matter. I had already said there is an inflammatory phase. So some of the children, so after getting, uh, being COVID negative, after three to four weeks, some children might have high grade fever, which lasts for more than four to five days. They can have r rashes on the body, red rashes on the body. The eyes as well as the uh, lips will turn red in color. They can have uh, extremities, they can have uh, swelling of the extremities. So any of these symptoms are being seen, it is to be taken as a danger sign and the child has to be taken to the hospital because we want to rule out whether the child has Kawasaki-like disease or now Miss C. So 
we have to because it is one of the danger signs the child has to be hospitalized blood test has to be done and appropriate treatment has to be given to the uh, child so we should be aware of such a condition so now our next question is what about the vaccination in our kids so we already know that below 18 years we are not vaccinating so those studies have to be proved and if it is there will be later made available for our kids so along with this we should not forget to give our children our routine vaccinations so whenever possible from the nearby hospitals or your health care centers you can always give the routine vaccinations to your kids till now we have been speaking about the direct effects of covid now covid has a lot of indirect effects which has actually affected our families and we are not well aware so we have uh, for the past one and a half years we know that we all have been living in a state of instability be it our job or whatever so these are having effects on us now these effects can happen to our uh, our effects will actually indulge our children also so ab about the food it is maybe we are not able to provide well for our kids or that might be reason for our kids might have malnutrition and other problem which is mostly um, faced by the society right now is, is we all know that many of the it is an era where home bakers have come up a uh, lot of cooking and other activities are occurring at homes so what is our effects our kids are having more and more food and our kids are just being obese it is the time that we should not be silent we should recognize that this obesity can later result in heart diseases maybe uh, high bp or cholesterol all these conditions can affect our children even diabetes can affect our children so we shouldn't be silent this is the time when we have to realize and recognize so what can we do for our children so it is always better whatever we are planning so we have to implement that so as adult we have to implement that uh, the amount of oily fat or these food to be taken at home we have to control it now uh, for our children also it is always better we make them exercise so along with them we should also be exercising so floor exercise are better anyway we cannot go out walking or do cycling now what else can we do uh, floor exercises if they are interested in uh, dancing or any other activities which can be provided online it is better we have to help out our children with it now one of an other ill effect of covid which has already been started earlier but it has turned out as a nightmare for us is the screen time increased screen time for our children so screen time what other things we have to consider so always now we know that schools have started the children have to sit in front of laptops the posture should always be correct and it is always better at the elbow level if the child is able to place the hands on the table and you keep it at one arm distance your laptop you can keep it at one arm distance when the child is looking at the laptop a little lower a 5 cm is a little lower than the uh, eyes you can keep the center of the screen so the child can look perfectly into the screen and always you should adjust the brightness to 50 percentage so it is not very bright uh, for the child's eyes another important matter what you have to take into consideration if your child is using spectacles usually every 6 months you are supposed to check the bar if you haven't done it do it at the earliest and always make it a habit the child should be wearing spectacles while using uh, uh, using mobile or your laptop whatever it is another thing what we have to uh, indulge in the child what we have to help out the child is usually our class is about 30 to 40 minutes so after a break of 20 minutes always said for 20 minutes you look at the screen you look for 20 seconds at a far away place a 20 feet distant object you have to look so after 20 minutes you make it a practice that the child takes the eyes away from the screen and looks at a another far away object for at least 20 seconds then you will always ask your child to blink the eyes should not be staring on the screen for a long time ask them to blink the eyes and nowadays everyone does the uh, eye exercises in schools also yoga they are practicing but it is better every day you make it a habit that the child does all this at home we know that we might have problems at home so we might speak in a loud voice to each other before our children were not much affected because they meet their friends they go outside they actually forget what happens in the house but now our children are at home so it is the time for us to uh, control our anger and what else we can do with our kids so always better we spend time with the kids even though we are at home we all know that we spend more time with the mobiles so we have to try to spend more time with the child sitting in the balcony or in a courtyard you spend child you do indoor games with your uh, make the child play some indoor games 
and uh, what else can be. So, you have to understand that the ill effects of the screen time, it will show as mood swings. The child might not be concentrating in studies or concentrating in any anything what the child is doing. So, all these are ill effects. So, by this time you have to recognize and help your child to be out of it. And another important uh, thing is our, child's, uh, our children even forget about their personal hygiene. So, it is always better you make it a habit. So, it's better you make a timetable at least 15 minutes a day you make them write handwriting, copywriting book you make them write that and you spend more time with the child. So, by this uh, we know that not only we have to protect our children from the uh, COVID infection but also about the indirect effects of COVID. We have to protect our children. It is us who should be taking care of our children. Thank you.